ഈശംശിയാക്കി സ്തുതി ആയിരിക്കട്ടെ പിള്ളേരെല്ലാം സുഖമായിട്ടിരിക്കുന്നല്ലോ അല്ലേ ഹോപ്പ് യു ആർ ഹാഡ് എ വെരി സ്പെഷ്യൽ ഈസ്റ്റ് അറ്റ് ഹോം വിഷിങ് യു ഓൾ ദി ബ്ലെസ്സിങ്സ് ഫ്രം എവ്രി വൺ ആൻഡ് ദ കാറ്റഗസ് ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെൻറ്റ് ഓൾ ദി ഈസ്റ്റർ ബ്ലെസ്സിങ്സ് ടു യു ദിസ് ടൈം ഇറ്റ് വാസ് എ വെരി ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് ഈസ്റ്റർ പ്രോബ്ലി ദ ഫസ്റ്റ് ടൈം ഇൻ അവർ ലൈഫ്സ് വി നെവർ കെയിം ടു ദ ചേർച്ച് ഈവൻ വൺസ് ഡ്യൂറിങ് ഹോളി വീക്ക് വി വെർ നോട്ട് ഏബിൾ ടു ബട്ട് പോളച്ചൻ ആൻഡ് ഹിസ്റ്റി മേഡ് ഷുർ ദാറ്റ് വി ആർ വി വെർ ഏബിൾ ടു പാർട്ടിസിപ്പേറ്റ് ഇൻ ഓൾ ദി ലിറ്ററജിക്കൽ സെലിബ്രേഷൻസ് ഓഫ് ദ ഹോളി വീക്ക് വി ഇൻ ഇൻ ഫുൾ സ്പിരിറ്റ് അറ്റ് ഹോം സോ താങ്ക് യു പോളച്ച ഫ്രം എവ്രി വൺ സ്പെഷ്യലി ഫോർ ദാറ്റ് ടുഡേസ് അസംബ്ലി വിൽ സ്റ്റാർട്ട് വിത്ത് ദ സൈൻ ഓഫ് ദ ക്രോസ് വി ഹാവ് അൺമരിയ ആൻഡ് മാത്യൂസ് ജീവ് മാത്യൂസ് ജോൺ ടു ലീഡ് എസ് വിത്ത് ദ പ്രയർ Queen of heaven rejoice. Alleluia. For he whom you did marry to bear. Alleluia. Has risen as he said. Alleluia. Pray for us to God. Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad O virgin Mary. Alleluia. For the Lord is truly risen. Alleluia. O God, who gave joy to the whole world through the resurrection of your son our Lord Jesus Christ. Grant that we may obtain through his virgin mother Mary the joys of everlasting life. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Queen of Heaven is the prayer we pray from Easter Sunday till Trinity Sunday. So, Logarathni Anandhi Chalam, Rejoice, Queen of Heaven. It's a great prayer of joy. We are rejoicing with the Mother Mary at the resurrection of her son. In the 6th century, Pope Gregory was the Pope and he was leading a procession seeking the intercession of Mother Mary because Rome was suffering from a plague. And the image of mother mary which is believed to have been painted by saint luke was held in front of the procession and suddenly the air was filled with a heavenly perfume and when saint gregory looked up he saw an angel and the angel said queen of heaven rejoice alleluia for he whom you did merit to bear alleluia has risen as he said alleluia and the pope promptly added pray for us to god alleluia so from the time this prayer had been in the church and the importance is we are celebrating with the mother mary rejoicing at the, at the resurrection of her son while the angelus celebrates the birth the annunciation the regina chelli celebrates the resurrection of jesus so please keep that in your mind and always when you say this prayer there should be great joy in your heart at the at the new life jesus his victory over death now let's listen to ann maria from year 12 she's going to talk to us dear father paul sisters and my friends as you all know last sunday was easter sunday we celebrated the resurrection of our lord and savior jesus christ after dying for our sins and our salvation and giving us eternal life that we are so thankful for. In this time, we are reminded to keep our faith, praise him, serve him and thank him for all he has done for us. But none of this would have been possible without his shedding of blood. In this time of need, faith is very important to me and I'm sure it is to everyone else. With all the uncertainty around us, coming together on Easter has surely helped everyone feel as though God is standing by us and will help our world become a safer place. Not only is faith important, but so is hope. As Pope Francis said in his homily, we acquire a fundamental right that can never be taken away from us, the right to hope. In this time, hope is a difficult thing to have. As the days go on, fear continues to grow. But as Christians, we need to realize that Jesus' hope is different. As the Pope said, he plants in our hearts the conviction that God is able to make everything work unto good. Because even from the grave, he brings life. This is reminding us that through God, all things are possible. So whenever we are in doubt or struggling in this time of hardship we should never forget about the faith and hope provided to us by our savior. Today is the 8th day of Easter, more commonly known as Divine Mercy Sunday. Divine Mercy Sunday has been celebrated on the octave day of Easter since 2000. It's a day honoring Jesus' mercy which was received by Polish saint Faustina Kłaska. She was born on August 25th, 1905. in Poland of a poor and religious family of peasants the third of 10 children she was baptized with the name helena from a very tender age she stood out because of her love of prayer work obedience 
and also her sensitivity to the poor. By the age of 17, she already felt the callings of her religious vocation. After finishing school, she wanted to enter the covenant, but her parents did not give her permission to do so. Called during a vision of suffering Christ, on August 1st, 1925, she entered the congregation of the Sisters of Our Lady of Mercy, where she lived for 13 years, and took the name Sister Mary Faustina. Sister Faustina was a faithful daughter of the church, which she loved like a mother and a mystic body of Christ. For this reason, the Lord Jesus chose her as the apostle and secretary of his mercy, so that she could tell the world about his great message. In the old covenant, he said to her, I sent prophets, wielding thunderbolts to my people. Today I am sending you, with my mercy, to the people of the whole world. I do not want to punish aching mankind, but I desire to heal it, pressing it to my merciful heart. In her mission, she had three tasks. The first, reminding the world of the truth of our faith, revealed in the Holy Scripture about the merciful love of God toward every human being. The second, entreating God's mercy for the whole world, and particularly for sinners. Among others, through the practice of new forms of devotion, to the divine mercy and the third, initiating the apostolic movement of the divine mercy, which undertakes the task of proclaiming and entreating God's mercy for the world and strives for Christian perfection. Let us remember that through faith, hope, and especially through mercy on this Divine Mercy Sunday, that we will reach perfection and overcome the global pandemic with the trust we place in God. Thank you. Thank you, Anne Maria, for that wonderful message of Easter, the hope of Easter, and for preparing us for celebrating the Feast of Divine Mercy. At this time of the world going through the coronavirus pandemic, it's all the more important that we pray for the mercy of God to be on every patient who is suffering. So let us keep all of them during the Holy Kurbana today as we celebrate the Feast of Divine Mercy. You may have seen images of people coming out of hospital after recovering from the illness. The staff are clapping, applauding their victory over illness. They have conquered it. So I want you to listen to a prayer from the season of resurrection. Marunathya jai chadakki mishi hai, nindi sabheel sada sanihidan ai, nava jeevan kondu adhine narakkhaname. Lord who conquered death, fill your church with new life by being alive in it. So this is our prayer today. Jesus is risen and we, he has conquered death. We are praying for his presence in our church to fill us with new life and new hope. Make us companions of your life of sacrifice to enable us to be partners in your resurrection. Many of us, many of your parents are already doing it by partaking in the ministry of health care. You know, they are being companions in the life of sacrifice of Jesus and they are bearing witnesses. And the prayer continues like this. May your peace and tranquility dwell in this congregation, families, and the entire humankind forever and ever. Yesterday's Holy Kubana during the service, Father Babu at the Preston Cathedral shared a very special message. The reading was from St. Mark's Gospel, and it told about the huge stone that was in front of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and the other ladies were thinking who would remove the stone for us on their way to visit to the, the tomb. And, but when they reached there, the, the stone was removed and there was a young man in white garments inside the tomb. So for them, he was the messenger of hope. He gave them the news of new life. We are all called to be those messengers of hope. We are all given a white garment at baptism. So that is our call today, to be that messengers of hope at this time. Wherever you are, be that messenger of hope in your family, in your workplace, with your friends, in the virtual world. Be the messenger of hope. Be the young man in the white garment. Let's look at what your children had been doing during the week. We have some really good images. There's Marin Sebastian. She made some palm leaves with papers and she was singing Hosanna songs. So well done, Marin. 
we have a beautiful shadow picture of uh, Palm Sunday done by Trisha Titus from year 7. That's really, really good. Well done, Trisha. This is a very reflective picture of the current situation done by Merin Twinkle. Um, we have Jesus comforting a corona patient who's, who's covered with the flags of different countries. So we can see that Jesus is, you know, consoling everyone who is from different countries. And Jesus is a doctor. He has got the step on him. So really well done, Merin. We have uh, flapjacks, delicious looking flapjacks done by Isabel and Alina Burley. Well done, girls. Keep going. And Maria is doing pictures of, you know, the days of the Holy Week. There's Palm Sunday there and she's done the rest of the days as well. Well done, Maria. And uh, this beautiful cross-stitching done by Mia. Well done, Mia. We look forward to seeing the finished product. Thank you to all of you who have done it. And we look forward to having, you know, more images next week. Do more indigenous things and share with us so that we can all celebrate it together. Well, now it's time to listen to a wonderful message from Father Tony. We are so thankful to Father Tony for sharing his thoughts with us once again today. I'm sure his message on Palm Sunday is still fresh in your mind. So listen carefully, children. Father Tony has got some very great things to tell you. All my young friends in Bristol Cardiff region, I wish you peace and greetings. Hope and pray that all of you are keeping fine and staying healthy at this time. This is a Divine Mercy Sunday. And we are in the Easter season, a season of seven weeks of celebrating our faith with the risen Lord who gives his presence and encouragement to each and every one of us. He is alive and he is with us is the message of this season. This weekend we have two Toms to refer each other. Captain Tom Moore is a champion of the week as he came out walking with his fragile steps and became a huge blessing and inspiration for the NHS, as well as the whole of our country. In the Gospel, we have the disciple Tom, Thomas, who lost a blessing because he failed to lock in himself in the community. Interestingly, friends, as we are now, the Bible speaks of a time of lockdown, a season of apostles waiting to be encouraged and refilled in faith, love and mission. Thomas missed seeing the Lord for his failure to stay in. The whole world is earnestly asking us, let us protect each other by staying home. However, St. Thomas is the key used by the fourth evangelist. John to open the deadlock or the arrested situations of the journey of the disciples. The three such occasions in the gospel are one fear, second ignorance or, or uncertainty and third faith crisis or doubt. In John's gospel in all these three situations it is Apostle Thomas who opens the dead end. The disciples had concrete moments of threat to life, a situation where fear would swallow their commitment in life. John 11.6, at the juncture of an expected death, it is Thomas who inspires the community saying, let us go and die with him. We all face fear in one sense or the other every day and in every aspect of life, sometimes our deep relationship our friendship to our succumb to fear. Especially in the season of pandemic, whole world speaks a language of fear and news of imminent threat. Apostle Thomas is a model who inspires to move with Jesus, the author of life. Courage of a Christian is that Jesus is alive and he is with us. Friends, courage of a Christian is that Jesus is alive and he is with us. Hence the first model of Thomas' faith, let us go and die with him, a journey from fear to the presence of the living Lord. The second moment of embarrassment faced by the apostles is ignorance. All of us in a situation where we are lost, what is next or how to feel the same? 
At the farewell moment of Jesus, it is Thomas who raises the question over all the doubts and fears of the community. John chapter 14, 5, Thomas asks, Lord, we do not know where you are going and how can we know the way? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Friends, even yesterday afternoon at the crematorium, I read this gospel passage and how consoling are these words at the moment of death and uncertainty of life. At the face of the mystery of life, a situation where no human words can give us an answer, Jesus gives us the unique claim, I am the way, I am the truth and I am the life. On the situations of our ignorance or veiled moments, it is he who is the answer. Thomas unlocks this door to Jesus. In certain moments where we feel veiled and mysterious about life. The third moment of deadlock is faith crisis that is called doubt. At any time if we start with experiencing fear, it leads us to be uncertain and mysterious about everything and finally we land in a situation of faith crisis, a moment of no meaning to life. See what happens to Thomas. Thomas the inspirer finally lands in a situation of doubt. John chapter 20 verse 25 Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his sides, I will not believe. When life turns against us, we all could land into this challenge of life. On the Eastern Vigil Holy Mass, I had only one person attending the Mass and at, at the end, being thankful for the Mass, he surprised me with a sincere question from heart. Father, really is a God. When life is crucially challenged, any blessed person could ask the same question or may be indignant and doubtful like Thomas. I answered to the question saying, in the Bible there is a book about doubting God itself. The book of Job. Bible deals with the situation of doubt and crisis. And the answer is God is not absent, but he is lifting this people and his people to a different view of reality. Job at the end of his crisis, he learns to look life from a different view of life and then he says so far I had only heard about you now I see you openly. Thomas finds the answer and he says with a clear mind at the end my Lord and my God there is no better prayer than this in the Bible you are my Lord above all the crises and blessings in life and you are my God who is before and after me. Friends, the summary of this my Lord and my God is very detailed and it's very deep. It just says, you are my Lord above all the crises and blessings in life and you are my God who is before and after me. Friends, as we are locked down, this Sunday invites us to understand the three zones where we could lose our companionship and commitment in life. The zones of fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Easter messages, he is living and he is with us. At the moments of fear, mystery and doubt, he is a constant companion. God bless you all. On behalf of Father Paul and Father Joy, I greet you peace and good stay. God bless Father Tony. Tony for that wonderful, wonderful message and for preparing us in a so beautifully for celebrating Pudhinyaya today. Um, we are always indebted to you for your great support to our community. So thank you once again. Children, now we'll be going to the classes. You will have uh, children from year 1 to 6 will have the video lessons uploaded. And children from 7 to 12 will have the lessons through Zoom. So please be ready for that. But before you go, just want to tell you that uh, many of you are already attending it, I know. But there is daily Holy Kubana from Preston Cathedral at 10 o'clock in the morning. So... I'm sure all of you are able to be, you know, 
up and uh, active at that time so please if this is the time the what we can do at this time is only pray pray for god's mercy so make sure that uh, try your best to attend holy kubana every day uh, i know many of you are already attending it but please uh, those who are not please make every effort to do so and whenever you attend holy kubana please make sure that you you attend with full reverence just as how you would in the, in the church so enjoy your lessons today and stay safe and we'll see you again next week thank you